Let's talk about drugs given during labor. Labor drugs are often broken down into uterotonic drugs and tocolytic drugs. Uterotonic drugs are uterine stimulants. If we break apart this word, utero is referring to uterus, and tonic means tone or contraction. That's exactly what uterotonics do. They increase contractions and increase muscle tone in the uterus. You can remember this by the memory trick, uterotonic, think it's uterus time where tocolytics are uterine relaxants. If we break apart this word, toco is derived from the Greek word tokos, which means childbirth, and lytic means to stop or reduce. So these suppress or inhibit uterine contractions. You can remember this by the memory trick, tocolytics think, let's talk about it first before I deliver this baby. Okay, now let's look at why they're both used. Uterotonics are given to induce or start labor and to strengthen the labor. They're also used to stop postpartum hemorrhage. Where tocolytics are the opposite. These are used to slow or delay preterm labor and it gives the baby time to mature in utero. Okay, one last time, remember, the main difference is uterotonics think turn on contractions and tocolytics turn off contractions. All right, now let's dive into the medication. First, let's talk about misoprostol brand name Cytotec. Remember, this is a uterotonic. The main NCLEX alert here is that misoprostol should not be taken during pregnancy. Taking this medication when pregnant or trying to conceive can lead to miscarriage, early labor, or birth defects. Misoprostol, think miscarriage. This medication is only to be used when the patient is absolutely ready to go into labor. The next medication is oxytocin, which is also a uterotonic. Oxytocin is the generic name and the brand name is Pitocin. Oxytocin, think to contract. This medication induces labor and stimulates uterine contractions. It also promotes delivery of the placenta and treats postpartum hemorrhage. It's important to discontinue oxytocin if contractions last greater than 60 seconds, the frequency of the contractions is more than two to three minutes apart, or if an abnormal fetal heart rate pattern develops. Remember, the normal fetal heart rate is 110 to 160 beats per minute. Something else to remember for oxytocin is to always piggyback oxytocin into the main IV fluid. You can remember this by the memory trick, Pitocin Think Piggyback. Some complications of oxytocin, since it's such a strong medication, can be painful contractions and uterine rupture. It's so important that you do not administer misoprostol or oxytocin together. Giving these medications together increase the risk of uterine hyperstimulation, which can lead to fetal distress or even uterine rupture. All right, next we have terbutaline, which is a tocolytic or a uterine relaxant. Terbutaline is the generic name and brethine is the trade name. Terbutaline, think turbulence. Turbulence usually delays airplane arrival times. Same goes for labor. Terbutaline delays labor. This medication halts uterine contractions, which delays labor and is used to prevent preterm labor. It may be given 48 hours to suppress preterm labor. Think of the baby saying, I need more time in here so I can grow and form in utero. Now onto nifedipine. This is also a tocolytic or a uterine relaxant. Nifedipine is the generic name and Procardia is the trade name. Nifedipine think no more contractions. This medication also halts uterine contractions, which again delays labor and is used to prevent preterm labor. All right, next we have magnesium sulfate. This is also a tocolytic or uterine relaxant. The memory trick for this is magnesium sulfate is for moms at risk for seizures or those who have preeclampsia. This medication is used to prevent and control seizures in mothers with preeclampsia or eclampsia. Pre means before and eclampsia is related to seizures. So we want to treat preeclampsia before it progresses to those seizures or eclampsia. Magnesium helps us do that. 
You'll want to closely monitor for signs of magnesium toxicity. So we're looking out for respiratory depression. That means less than 12 breaths per minute. Decreased deep tendon reflexes. Reflexes start to fade when magnesium levels are too high. And a low urine output, specifically less than 30 milliliters per hour. If these signs of toxicity occur, stop the magnesium sulfate and administer calcium gluconate, which is the antidote. Okay, another drug that can be given in labor is beta-methasone, which is a corticosteroid. You can remember this by the memory trick, steroids stimulate surfactant. We give this medication to the mother during preterm labor to help the baby's lungs mature by stimulating surfactant production, which is essential for breathing after birth. Okay, now for the most commonly tested on for these medications. Uterotonics are used to start or strengthen labor. Remember, they stimulate contractions. Where tocolytics are used to slow or stop labor, they relax the uterus. You never wanna give oxytocin and misoprostol together because that can cause dangerous overstimulation of the uterus. Misoprostol should not be used during pregnancy unless medically necessary. It's used to induce labor, not to maintain pregnancy. You always want to monitor for magnesium toxicity and keep calcium gluconate at the bedside as the antidote. Betamethasone is given to the mom to stimulate fetal lung development before a preterm delivery. That's all for drugs given during labor. If you want more videos that are not on YouTube, check out Nurse in the Making Plus. This includes access to our growing video library, interactive worksheets that go with each video, and practice questions. You can get access to Nurse in the Making Plus with the Complete Nursing School Bundle. Click the link to the Complete Nursing School Bundle and join thousands of other future nurses using Nurse in the Making Plus. You got this, future nurse.